Hello all, welcome back everyone to this day two of Anicorn 2022. Invest in Nursing, Influence of Technology, Are We Ready? is the first session where we are going to discuss about chaired by Ms. Leena Chandrasekharan, President, Tamil Nadu and Puducherry chapter. Technology is a useful servant, but a dangerous master too. Let us explore what the panelists have to talk about. Welcome each of you to the day two conference on transformational leadership in Western nursing. We have five tracks for the day and we begin with track four, invest in nursing, influence of technology. Are we ready? Being a nurse is highly demanding. This hasn't been highlighted better than during the COVID-19 pandemic. As a nursing profession requires the core of what makes us human, that is to pay attention, being empathetic and caring, it will never be replaced by technology. However, these innovations can relieve nurses of the burden of many monotonous and repetitive tasks. We can keep quoting many such technological innovations which has benefited nurses. These have made their work less cumbersome, more creative, and it might free up some time. Nurses have started understanding, embracing new technologies as part of their work, which impacts the globe's health. We have four eminent speakers in track four, and I would like to introduce all of them together so that we can save time. Our first speaker is Mr. Rajiv Sikha, Group CIO of Medanta Hospitals, speaking to us on what is being invested, technology and nursing. Mr. Rajiv is with over three decades of career. He has the perfect blend of having worked across sectors and multiple functions, initially as a technology solution provider and now leading the IT transformation. Rajiv is a regular panelist and speaker on digital initiatives in healthcare. He is a member of CI-led Artificial Intelligence Forum. He is also an executive council member of CIOs of India. He's also on the advisory boards of academic institutes and IT companies. It's a pleasure for us to listen to him on what he has achieved in health field, which has impacted nursing care and nurses' life at the bedside. We welcome you, Mr. Rajiv Sikha. Our next speaker is Dr. Lata Venkatesan, Professor Com Principal, College of Nursing, Ames, New Delhi. She's also the chairperson of research committee and founder member of the Association of Executives India. She's with 32 years of experience in education, clinical nursing and administration. She's also the PhD guide in the WHO INC RGUHS consortium. Nursing thematic lead for learning content creation for COVID by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. She has published several articles in index journals, authored textbooks, editor of journals and currently involved in WHO SEAR project, AIMS UCLA project, advisory board member of Skill to Scale Indo-Sweden Collaborative Initiative, committee member of ICMR, UPSC advisor, selection committee member at AIMS. Dr. Lata is here to enlighten us on technology and investment in nursing education. Welcome you, madam. Our third speaker is Dr. Tej Prakash Sinha, Associate Professor, Department of Emergency Medicine, Ames, New Delhi, speaking to us on nurse-led emergency assessment, a reality. He has many accolades to his credit. He is the co-chair of Education Subcommittee, Emerge Global Network, member of WHO Collaborating Center for Emergency and Trauma Care, Southeast Asia, Secretary International Network, for critical ultrasound, national expert for emergency and trauma care policy, Niti Ayog, and Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. His passion for emergency and trauma care system building, including training and research, has enabled him to achieve many laurels in the field. Let's wait to hear what he has to say on technology impacting nurses in the emergency room, triage and assessment. Welcome you, sir. 
The fourth and last speaker of track four is Ms. Jenny, co-founder and CNO, Aida Health. She is an international faculty. She is with 12 years of experience working in a critical care setting and as a healthcare administrator. She has spearheaded the development of a revolutionary tricorder style health assessment device, Mouth Lab, which has 10 plus health parameters in just 30 seconds. Ms. Matthew holds a dual master's degree from the prestigious John Hopkins University. Ms. Matthew is a proven leader recognized for building scalable processes, integrating analytics into decision making, improving customer satisfaction, and driving large scale digital transformations in healthcare. We are happy to have her speaking, or speaking to us on nurse and startup technology. Welcome you, madam. Thank you, Ms. Lena Chandrasekharan and the panelists for that wonderful thoughts. Namaste. Greetings of the day. Uh, my name is Rajiv Sikha and I'm part of Medanta IT. According to me, uh, future of the hospitals is going to define by the nurses. And we will not have hospitals because doctors are not there or, uh, or infrastructure is not there, but rather nurses are not around, which are very much required for a hospital to run. Uh, may I have the slides, please? I'm going to talk about, you know, how do we do digitization for most overworked healthcare workers, which are nurses in any hospital. Uh, according to me, when you talk about uh, any digitization, these are the five parameters which are required for any digitization efforts. Some of the parameters may fall for more than one efforts or activity. So in this particular case, I'm going to speak about some of the initiatives which we have taken for nurses uh, activities in terms of digitizations. And these are into the five uh, levers, which are clinical outcomes, operational efficiency, patient engagement, and so forth. I'll take the first, first one, which according to me is very dear to me, is on the auto allocation steps for a particular nurse. We all know that nurses sometimes are over allocated or under allocated in a ward, and sometimes we have to do jugglery in a typical hospital of Medanta size where we have 1200 odd bed. You know, this becomes a very, very trivial exercise. And there are complex rules with respect to test score of a patient, uh, type of the ward or the ICU. Within the ward also, there are complexity with the transplant ward or a general ward. Uh, then the grade of the nurse and the roster of that particular day. And then with whichever is the min and max ratio for a patient to nurse defined, governed by the hospital. So what we have done is that we have implemented a solution, which is a handheld device. Nurse can see how many patients are allocated to her or based on the patient uh, type she can fill the test score of the patient at the start of the shift or at the end of the shift for the new nurse so in this particular case ward in charge can also see that for a particular nurse how many patients there are what are their test scores and what is the uh, patient wise view for a particular uh, ward uh, similarly supervisor who has one level above the uh, ward level she can he or she can see how many nurses are allocated for a particular ward whether over or under, and all that movement between the wards can be done by the supervisors, depending on the over or may. And then there are multiples, you know, annotations which are there, which will tell you that whether it's over and under, whether it's a manual location or auto location, all that is by press of a single button by which complete, you know, hospital of 1200 bedded can have this allocation. Based on the, this is another very solid problem, which we have seen that when a nurse goes into a ward or an ICU, uh, for doing specimen collection, there are problems uh, or there are mismatch. What we have is a very simple solution. Nurse is carrying a mobile device. Nurse scans the Q, the wristband of the patient. She then picks up the vial, scan it, and if both matches, you know, she can take the vial, she can take the blood sample collection, and that way multiple sample collection can be done. Not just this, you know, when she's sending the dispatch, dispatch now, we will capture the details, you know, when the dispatch is sent, what is the mode of the dispatch, either a porter or a pneumatic shoot and so on and so forth. So in this particular case, right from order 
to sample collected, to sample dispatch, to order registered in the lab, complete that is there. So this is a very, very transparent and open system for finding out where the lags are in case there are any. Uh, this is a bedside assessment. We all know that in typical bedside assessment, nurse has to pick up a lot of uh, you know, assessment on a piece of paper at the bedside and then come back to the HIS. So definitely there are issues with respect to timelines and translation from a paper to the computer system. What we have come out with that more than a dozen odd assessment forms are there both on the IP and ICU. Uh, nurse on the bedside will do the assessment and this form will open only by scanning the wristband of the patient which means that you can't do it sitting in home and doing all the assessments uh, you know, away from the hospital. Uh, other is that clinical notification. We all know that why it is important to have clinical notification on time to the nurse. So where you have a care team, nurses are part of that. Any critical results or results which are marked as significant or significant events get notified to the uh, nurse in this app and all those beep comes and appropriate actions are taken. We all know that what action has to be taken for a particular event. This is POCT. We all know that in a typical point of care device, we have all hospitals you know face revenue challenges because a first nurse has to make an order then nurse has to go the do the actual test and then go back to the ecosystem and enter the result of this POCT test so there are three steps what we have done is that go to the website do the test automatically test get uh, captured especially uh, you know abg or blood glucometer and then a Billing order also get automatically converted. So instead of doing a billing order first, what we do is that we capture the uh, blood test, or oh, sorry, the test, and then make the complete entry, reversal entry. So that way there is always a sync between uh, test and the revenue part. No problems at all as of now. This is you know very typical example and student syndrome which is there. You know you don't go to the class, but you make sure that someone else is doing a proxy for you. And I used to do that throughout my college life. So in this case, what we have done is that, uh, you know, I'm learning from my mistakes. There is a biomet there is a face recognition device. Each and every student who's coming or a nurse who's coming for, <coughs> for a training, classroom training, show your face, you get registered and automatically at once, you know, while going out, you have to do one more time. So in and out has to be carried out. And there are rules, how much, uh, you know, punch in and punch it, time flexibility is required. Automatically, your attendance counter goes to the, HRMS system and your SAP your training certificate is generated from the HRMS system. So this is completely automated. Two, three guys who are doing throughout their life, only this particular part have better jobs to do. But this is again a very interesting system. We all know that nurses are doing a lot of non-clinical work in a typical nursing unit. You know, what we have done is that we have put a uh, Alexa device on the nursing unit and on each bed and bedside of the patient, there is a video Alexa. So they call the nurse. Uh, for whatever activities, in case it is a drinking water, call goes automatically to the FNB for food and beverages also, similarly for housekeeping and similarly for engineering. And nurse is called only and only for clinical activities. That way, you know, nurse time is more utilized for the holistic care for which, you know, the very basic purpose of having, you know, that passionate care in the ecosystem. And uh, we leverage this during the COVID times. Uh, when there was, you know, dire need to have unnecessary exposure of the nurse uh, to the patient, what uh, to the patient uh, having, you know, COVID, uh, and this is simply fantastic and loved by each and everyone. Uh, BCMA, we all know that it is in progress for Medanta. Uh, right patient, right drug, right dose, and right time. Uh, I'm of the strong opinion that uh, in case we have to fulfill the dreams of the freedom fighters, including Mahatma Gandhi ji, that. Uh, healthcare has to be there for each and everyone and that can only be scaled if you know we have uh, nurses doing the proper clinical job which is the holistic care instead of doing a uh, you know non-clinical work which can easily be digitized or automated by use of technology and I'm really proud that I'm as attached and associated with this cause and Medanta we are moving in this direction so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rajiv Sikha. It was a crisp presentation and you have thrown light on various aspects, auto allocation steps, dashboard for nurse in charges, supervisors at various levels, 
he is i think he has studied and understood all the problems of bedside nurses and tweak technology to solve all their troubles and of course nurses being helped by technology during the covid the pandemic season he has also touched upon technology in attendance in training and tele nursing and how they could reach out patients using technology thank you for that wonderful presentation mr rajiv we now welcome dr lata venkatesan professor cum principal college of nursing aims to enlighten us on technology and investment in nursing education over to you madam namaste everyone the theme of international council for the year 2022 is invest in nursing definitely it includes investment in nursing education also so i am here to talk about investment in nursing education let me share my slides investment in nursing education is needed in the technology and i would all the colleagues will definitely agree with me that technological investment is the need of the hour in nursing education because we have moved from blackboard to powerpoints and to online education and now to flip the classroom wherein the slides are already uploaded on the lms platform and the students are given the assignments before the classroom and in the classroom the discussions takes place and some assignments follow after the classroom and our labs also have transformed by using the chase doll which was designed in the year 1911 to low fidelity mannequins high fidelity mannequins where you can Uh, see the individual performance to that of group or team performance where the instructor sits in the uh, common uh, area and watches the performance of the students online teaching by nursing faculty has grown rapidly only after covid and nurse educators role also has changed we are no more the sage on the stage we have become the guide on the side and the technology also enables students to be independent and more self sufficient educational technology will play a huge role in transforming the educational landscape in future and it will help us to deliver more personalized and effective learning experiences to the students but 67% of them are blaming lack of funding or investment into the technology in nursing education and if you look at the technology and nursing education it is no more limited to four walls it, it the information can be accessed online through internet emails listservs and conferencing and we have conducted research by sending google forms across the uh, borders from different countries we were able to collect the data and empowering nursing faculty to be creative in designing lectures that fits their students and healthcare communities is the challenge now we need to face for example how many of us are familiar with how to use the flipped classroom effectively the role of technology in nursing education is very broad the nursing students need access to online education live and web based simulations mobile apps virtual reality and augmented reality to learn complicated or advanced procedures 3d printing reference guides electronic textbooks on mobile devices and finally online examinations whereas the scenario of global education today reveals that only less than 3% of global education expenditure goes towards technology this is set to increase by 1.8% by 2025 but experts are predicting and arguing this is not anywhere near enough if you look at these slides dollars 10 billion of educational funding in the first half of 2021 shows the china uh, has invested around 28 billion and us and european union also uh, has invested almost equal amount and india also has gained its momentum by investing more than 5 billion uh, dollars 
and the other countries, the rest of the world uh, surges from Canada, Korea and France. So this is how the investment between the countries has happened in the year 2021. The forecast is predicting that the spend towards educational technology will nearly double in the next five years. Currently, it is $220 billion and it is expected to double by 2025. And investment in education technology surges around the world because there is an appetite for innovation, there is booming demand, growing investment, government support, and the potential for transformation it has. And the nationwide survey forecasts big tech investment ahead for nursing education in three different areas, that is virtual simulation, online learning, and future learning environments. Virtual simulation and its role in nursing education will continue to grow with 48% of respondents indicating that they plan to invest more in virtual simulation over the next two years. Online learning, virtual simulation, adoptive quizzing, video for skills training and EHR applications will reach its full potential by 2025. It will increasingly focus on secure exam delivery systems as institutions look to ensure the integrity of students' test results. But of course, there are certain key barriers for adopting the technology. Again, the nationwide survey has forecasted lack of funding, challenges with student access to technology, senior faculty who are opting to retire instead of adopting to new ways of teaching or some of the forecasts. Challenges in the implementation of technology in nursing education is having unskilled faculty in the use of technology, not otherwise, maintaining a balance between the humans and technology, striking a balance between the investment, the costs and the benefits and unethical use. Recorded sessions will be listened by the students and, and now you know that in the industry, all these uh, uh, investors are only uh, doing the education, school education. It is not happening in classrooms, whereas it has been taken over by uh, the other channels. What is the classroom of the future will look like. The nursing classroom evolved in 2020 to be sure to continue, but what to do the next five years hold in terms of technology adoption. There will be fewer clinical sites, more simulation. So the investment will be required 48 percentage uh, towards virtual simulation, 38 percentage for virtual reality, 34 percentage towards high fidelity mannequins and 29 percentage towards augmented re uh, reality. And now we are supposed to design a model to guide the future investment in technology and to draw a cost benefit balance. There are multiple stakeholders who are benefited from the use of the technology, starting from the students, the faculty members, the patients, the family, the industry expectations, the technology developers, and many more stakeholders are involved. So we have to draw up a model where they are able to function together in an integrated manner and meet the expectations of every stakeholder. How to measure the financial impact of the technological in investment? We need to assess the profitability, productivity, and the consumer value of the investment. Take home messages, information is doubling every eight years, if not tripling in quantity and quality. Information is power. Technology facilitates the creative process in nurses, affording amazing vehicles for patient education, teaching and learning. And it will provide the platform for health promotion and prevention in a global scenario. And through digital access, we can also achieve the uh, SDG by 2030. So thank you all for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Lata, Madam, for taking us through the technology involved in nursing education. Madam has taken us and made us understand that 
we are no more at blackboard level but we have transformed the pandemic has almost made all these evolutions low fidelity to high fidelity mannequins those that give feedback to the candidates as well as the teachers she has also taken us through the various roles that the technology is doing in nursing education and through her statistics we have understood that the world has almost realized what is how important it is to invest in technology to improve the nursing education she has told us that virtual simulation online learning ehr applications will take full fledged role in nursing education so as nurse leaders we have to embrace and break all the challenges in implementing technological growth at the nursing education perspectives thank you madam we next have dr tej prakash sinha associate professor department of emergency medicine aims speaking to us on nurse led emergency assessment a reality over to you sir hello all i am dr tej prakash sinha work as associate professor in department of emergency medicine aims new delhi today i am going to talk about a very important aspect of patient care that we call as assessing and managing or resuscitating a sick patient so let me share my slides so hope you can see my slides so i was talking about uh, the emergency department where we may receive any kind of patient they they starting from the neonate to prostate depending upon various kind of conditions where every minute counts for the life of the patient and i am talking about this uh, trauma er where we receive these kind of patients so a typical emergency bed or resuscitation bed is like this where we have designated roles and footmarks where to stand how to act so these all things are protocolized and you can see one team is working on it so in our trauma center we we work in a team and and there is a protocolized banner of treating trauma patient is the atls way that is the abcd way where we go in a, with a set protocol but what what happens whenever you resuscitate a patient the goal is to to uh, save life limb or organ that is the whole ethos and the uh, the overall take behind it is never give up understand the needs provide quality care and same time keep in encouraging or motivating providing hope to the patient the team members and other people overall the idea is to saving the life the in in our country what is happening over years and decades that this resuscitation is being led by the doctors so called what we call as in casualties these casualty medical officers or the resident doctors so these these are resident doctors based assessment and management in emergency department the problem with these are they are short lived people they come as a tenure based like a post graduate can be maximum for Three years, or some rotating interns are for a month or fifteen days, so they are flying birds. So you kind of build a system upon those who are having different aspirations. Their their career pathways are different, and many a times they are unable to cope the environment, which is so stressful in emergency. So with that challenges, we thought how to improve and how to get a system which can operate at optimal level at least. so if we if we think about this particular quote by ian miller that nurses can fit in this we thought few decades back and we started working grooming our nurses okay and if if i just try to correlate the the words in this particular thing is never give up so understanding reliable encouraging saving lives so it comes like a just just a coincidence is a nurse who can fit into the thoughts of initial assessment management that is the resuscitation we started uh, uh, training our nurses 
by using simulations, didactics, bedside teaching, and that went ahead and which built a system at our place, which is a nurse-led resuscitation, where the nurse is from starting the reception of the patient, doing the triage, then assessing the patient, managing in ER, we try to build their knowledge and skills. It has started with initial days. It has started during utilizing them as a resuscitation specialist. In ER, like a doctor during the mass casualty incidents, that gives, gave us a confidence, not only to us, even to the administrator and other people. Yes, the nurses can do, do that particular bit of work, which is uh, classically a doctor's domain. And from there, we started building their skills in various uh, facets of emergency care, starting from, you can say, assessment, uh, taking the samples are the usual thing, doing ABG, interpreting ABG, interpreting ECGs, and then taking decisions based on that, managing airway, and, and going ahead with the advanced skills like point of care ultrasound, tra starting training, giving training to other nurses and colleagues. So this is this uh, knowledge and skill building uh, behaved like a weapon to treat our patients uh, when they are sick. And, and you can see this picture is very unique. You see, this is in middle is one of my nurse colleague. And on backside, that, uh, that lady is our senior resident. And you can see he is my uh, in charge, Professor Sanjeev Hoy. And he is giving the drug to the patient. And that, that nurse is giving the ultrasound guided fascia iliaca block. That is the one of the newer facet of pain management during resuscitation. So you can see this paradigm shift because we are always sort of doctors and we have to provide that quality care. So that, that is paying us dividend now by training our nurses. And it is not only the, the, the taking the advantage of nurses, but same time we have to keep them motivating. So phenomenon of reward so that the love can be live in our team and ultimately, once you will build this kind of system, which can percolate to other places, this is one, one of our nursing colleagues who is training to the other nurses to improve the assessment and management in, uh, in emergency at Arunachal Pradesh on this, uh, this side. They are learning CPR on pillows. So this percolating this science of nurse-led resuscitation to other places is very, very important. And then we did, and now, we can see there is a there's 360 degree role of nurses. They can do everything and they are wonderful people. And they can be, you can say, health of health department. So, so the, the ultimately, this is one case where the whole team uh, won the battle by helping this patient out. And, and finally, it is the team which matters. And our team, we are very proud to say that we have our nurses who are manning our resuscitation, assessing the patients, managing the patient, bringing the life back, and then sending them, making them happy and sending them back home. So this is how we envisage the nurse-led resuscitation in emergency care for whole our nation, and maybe in coming time percolating to other needed worlds also. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Tej. He has told us that nurses are the heart of the ER, that they are capable of many, and what we see is only the iceberg. But their full potential is unseen, and it is the responsibility of us to tap it out. Nurses' mesmerizing work during resuscitation and investigation is commendable. Training them on advanced technology helps in saving time saving patients during emergency situation. ER nurses are the face of the organization. The first aid, the quick triaging, the stabilizing, all improves the patient care and clinical outcome. Thank you, Dr. Tej, to elaborate us on all the technological aspects involved in ER nurses and how they could save patients at a very crucial time. We now have our international faculty, Ms. Jenny, 
co-founder and CNO, Aidar Health. Ms. Jenny is unable to join us from the United States due to the time difference. However, she has sent in her presentation and we are thankful for that. Over to her presentation now. Hi, I'm Jenny Matthew, the Chief Nursing Officer at ADAR Health. I appreciate the opportunity and I'm humbled to be among this esteemed panel of speakers. If I were to describe my journey to reach ADAR in a word, it would be transformative. This journey has been nothing short of a phenomenon filled with determination, passion, failure, disappointment, perseverance, and courage. As a nursing student, I did have a deep sense of empathy to nurture and to foster individuals during their most vulnerable times. To keep trying even when there seemed to be no hope at all. And it's difficult to decipher and nurture human psyche at its frailest moment. Apprehension, uncertainty, expectation has always been part of a nurse's life. But to do what nobody else would do in a way that nobody can do in spite of all that we go through, is what it means to be a nurse. The profession not only demands an understanding of diseases and illnesses at a molecular level, but requires nurses to assume a holistic approach of patient-centeredness and personalization. I started my working life at the reputed PD Hinduja National Hospital and Medical Research Center and was greatly influenced by their adherence to quality, application of evidence-based care, attention to patient satisfaction, and the resilience to respond to crisis. Contingency planning was always part of the care management process. The uncertainty of what if always had a prepared response. Armed with this experience and knowledge, I sought to pursue further. Learning has never ceased to be my passion. I pursued my dual masters at the Johns Hopkins Institute. To add another dimension of leadership awareness, understanding of healthcare standards, and technological impact on resources as seen through the lenses of the Western world. Technology, as I understood, if used constructively, could become an indispensable tool to support care. It is pivotal, though, that nurses understand the right balance of technology-led care and empowerment. Care and support needs to be calibrated at the right level, enough to empower towards independence than to cripple through dependence. Upon graduating, I was eager to use my clinical knowledge to foster technologies that could push the boundaries of healthcare delivery. And my curiosity led me to co-found a company with Mr. Satya Alumalai, a visionary and a passionate advocate of digital innovation that strives to simplify care. My second co-founder is Dr. Jean Friedman, an expert biomedical engineer with a deep knowledge in bioelectronics. By now, having lived in different continents, I realized that in spite of technological advancements, care was fragmented, information was siloed, and patient-centered care was just a buzzword. We thought, if we could rapidly and in real time collect a multitude of physical data that could reflect to health of an individual, it would be remarkable. Such an insight into one's health could be used both by patients and providers to understand treatment efficacy, impact of diet and lifestyle, and most importantly, to identify trends that could alert of a potential hospitalization or decompensation. Mouth being a rich source of biochemical and biophysical markers, we try to leverage that source by building a device that could measure 10 health parameters in 60 seconds, all using a single source. Meet MouthLab. MouthLab is a non-invasive handheld rapid health assessment device that is designed to be used at home and also in traditional care facilities. It is cost-effective and as easy to use as a digital thermometer yet capable of measuring multiple vital health parameters in just 60 seconds. Together, they create a unique biosignature comprised of multiple digital biomarkers that intelligently reflects a person's true health. 
Through daily monitoring, the longitudinal analysis can be performed to understand the subtlest deviations in health. ADAR's analytical engine ingests objective and subjective data to create personalized health scores that are disease specific. This tricorder can measure, like I mentioned earlier, close to 10 plus vital health parameters like temperature, respiratory rate, respiratory flow morphology, heart rate, heart rate wearability, blood pressure, ECG, pulse rate, oxygen saturation, lung function, all in 60 seconds. It's a remarkable feat. We built a full stack platform, which includes a single integrated device and a patient facing mobile app. To collect data that feeds into our analytics engine to generate actionable data and key health insights for providers, behavior coaches, and payers to offer real-time surveillance and for real-time risk triaging of patients. Through secure APIs from our trusted partners, we ultimately aim to enable digital transformation in healthcare. Our proprietary enterprise platform that can support analytics and visualization of data will be based off of the mouth lab data and patient reported outcomes. The goal is to create a unique biosignature for each individual based on their baseline. Additionally, recognizing the indispensable part that informal caregivers play in the life of these patients, we also created an ADAR companion app to support co-production of care meaning when loved ones collaborate to create the most conducive care environment beyond the boundaries of traditional care settings. Since inception, MouthLab has gone through iterations culminating to the current design and functionality. MouthLab underwent rigorous safety and clinical testing to adhere to all regulatory requirements. As ADAR grows, we aim to transform to a digital health company with data-driven software products that can help prevent, manage, and detect diseases early. With access to breath and saliva, the ability of mouth lab to capture exhaled biomarkers and salivary chemicals such as exhaled carbon monoxide, salivary cortisol, is all a real possibility. Our solution is clinically proven, patent protected, and more importantly, FDA cleared and CMARC approved. We have MD SAP and ISO certifications. ADAR's technology is validated, and this is demonstrated by the numerous certifications, patents, and collaboration ADAR has established. Furthermore, ADAR is currently working with BARDA, a Department of Health and Human Services, to build a predictive algorithm for the detection of complications related to post acute sequelae of COVID 19. COVID 19 has been a catalyst for decentralized care. With initiatives such as hospital at home, remote physiological monitoring, chronic care management. Policymakers and stakeholders are acknowledging the power of patient driven engagement and enablement. This is just the beginning, and our goal is to touch a million lives by making a meaningful impact in their health. We hope patients can take ownership of their health and bring the focus back to patient centered care. Finally, I want to conclude by saying that each one of us can steer ourselves in the direction that we choose. And I hope that each one of you can find the passion and the drive to, to redefine the norm and to be a catalyst for change in your own way. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jenny. She has started off by saying nurses can do what no one else dares to do. Her journey from PD Hinduja, Hinduja Hospital to the Johns Hopkins University. Her work at involvement in the Tricord Health Assessment Device, Mouth Lab, which measures around 10 plus health parameters in just 30 seconds. She has also told us how nurses can work along with biomedical engineers, IT team to innovate to build devices, to modify devices, give ideas to improve on what is existing. So nurses have all the capabilities to do innovations at the bedside and to modify the technologies available at the bedside and to innovate. Thank you, Ms. Jenny, for taking us through that wonderful presentation. Now the stage is open for question-answer session. We uh, 
don't have Dr. Tej with us because he had to leave us for an emergency at the hospital. We have Dr. Lata with us and we have Mr. Rajiv Sinha with us, Sikha with us. So over to the participants for your questions. I'm sure our speakers, our experts will be answering us. You may please post in your questions. Good afternoon, Lata, ma'am. Madam, there is a question. Can nurses be replaced by technology? Will the teachers lose their job? Will there be less number of teachers required if technology is going to overtake? There is some connectivity issue. We are waiting for the speakers. We do have technological issues at times. I think speakers are not able to connect. There's some connectivity issue.
sorry for the inconvenience we now have mr jaydeep gerald from adversity our platinum sponsor he is here to share his views on technology over to you sir hi it's a pleasure to be here with this august audience and participating in this exciting topic of upskilling in the nursing profession my name is gerald jaydeep and i'm the ceo of medvasi Let's take a look at the outcome of the last two years. According to official data, there have been over 4.6 lakh deaths due to COVID. But that's only the tail end of the problem. During this time, over 34 million people were infected by this disease. And while doctors and pharma companies have largely been celebrated as the heroes, the reality is that it's the nurses. who have been instrumental in leading the fight against this deadly pandemic if we keep covid data aside and look at the overall population of india 57% of the population seeks medical help in any given year that's 57% of 1.3 billion indians 70% of them go to private institutions hospitals that some of us in this conference represent and 5% of that population ends up getting hospitalized and all of this is managed by you so let's look at some more data according to nsso there are 2.43 million licensed nurses in india If we discount nurses who have retired, taken a break, decided to pursue other careers besides nursing, what's left is about 1.4 million nurses, supporting 57% of 1.3 billion people. Now that's a scary number. But hang on, there's more. WHO recommends 17.7 nurses. for every 100,000 population from the earlier data india has about 10.6 nurses for every 100,000 population but if we map this according to competency levels say higher the skilled nurses better her or his ability to manage healthcare we actually only have about 6 nurses for every 100,000 population in short we are losing four nurses to every in every 10 because of poor skills even with six nurses for every 100000 nurses we're okay published data indicates that the nursing profession is seeing close to 35% attrition and that's published data you and i know that a lot of us are actually dealing with attrition that's far higher in some cases going up to 80% let me switch gears for a minute a few years ago we did a skill gap assessment across 650 nurses and nursing leaders across corporate india based on that research we mapped nurses across different skill levels and discovered that only 10 to 15% of the nursing workforce was at the highest level of competency majority of the workforce were at, was at level c average now if you remember the attrition data what level do you think are we losing most of our nurses at you're right we're losing significant portion of our nurses at the competency level a which is the highly skilled workforce which is choosing to move out to do other things So it's clear that we all need better skilled nurses in our hospitals and we need to continuously invest in upskilling. There are clearly established benefits of having better skilled nursing workforce and the benefits extend to the whole organization and also to the patients. I'll pause a minute here some of the points on the screen are what you're already familiar with. but i'll pause for a minute for you to reflect on these
In the post-COVID era, there are now numerous opportunities for us to continuously upskill and expand our knowledge. The plethora of platforms for learning provide both online and offline learning models for nurses around the world. Nursing education today is not limited to technical training. It has transcended to continuous professional education, leading to specialities like critical care, cardiology, and more. Today, upskilling has come to the fore, driving towards better employability, better pay, and improved care delivery. It's also important to recognize efforts that the nursing leaders spend in identifying and facilitating opportunities for professional development for these frontline warriors. To help shape up the readiness of the healthcare infrastructure of our country in the face of the next calamity. We at Midvarsity have been actively supporting the vision of impacting healthcare through education. During the wave one and two of the pandemic, we trained over 240 lakh healthcare professionals on various aspects of COVID management. Post the pandemic, we partnered with Apollo Hospitals and the Impact Guru Foundation to launch ANGEL, Thank a Nurse Initiative, through which over 25,000 nurses have applied for and completed over 30 courses in various clinical, management, and digital health areas. We continue to work with hospitals, industry sponsors, and individual nurses who are passionate about their career in helping them upskill every single day. Active learning is what is transforming nursing education as we speak. Therefore, I would like to request each of us present here to explore and create new strategies and ideas to discover new frontiers in nursing that can make all the difference to this essential profession. I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time out today and for contributing to this important conversation. As always, I and my team at Midvarsity are always here to support, enable, and revolutionize healthcare. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Gerald. The speakers have gone offline due to connectivity issue, and we request the participants to leave your questions along with your mail so that we can send the answers. Thank you all delegates for staying with us through the technology session. And we thank all the experts for sharing their thoughts. And we end the session now.